Hi, this is Cheryl back with you from Farmhouse Frugally and I am today on my own just showing you some wonderful thrift flips for birds and blooms for spring as well as some other things. I have been very busy this past week or two, just inspired by the potential of spring. So I decided to make a little uh, candle. Um, I had this rusty old little muffin tin, and I wasn't sure how they were going to come out, but I had this uh, little wax I found at the dump last year on the good table, and I put some little dried pansies from my garden on the bottom of the rusty, crusty tin, broke up those little wax pieces and just melted them in the microwave. This is the simplest soap that for um, at least a week or two to cure. Um, and then I did have to use like a dull knife to go around the edge to pop those out because obviously this is not flexible. Uh, much easier if you use a silicone um, thing. And I did put a couple of drops um, of scent in that while it was cooling. Um, you don't want to do it while it's hot or it just kind of evaporates the scent. And then uh, those come out real sweet, but honestly, I would not use those dried flowers again. And then I had, my husband had gotten me for Christmas a bag of soy wax pellets. So I had these two of these beautiful green jars I got on the good table at my dump. And um, I wanted to make just one um, in that. So I took some beeswax that I had, one part beeswax to two or three parts of the soy, melted that on a double boiler, put the little um, wick in. This comes with a little, almost like a sticker on the bottom and you just press it down and then you hold the wick in the center, melt the wax and pour the wax over that. And then once that's, you know, mostly cool before it starts to solidify, add the scent and then pour that in. And if you have a divot, you want to make sure you keep just a little bit of wax so you can melt a little bit and pour it over. Um, that did not happen this time, but that has happened in the past. I don't know if it's because it cools too quickly or what, but sometimes it will sink in the center of your candle. And really that's all there is to candle making. It's so simple. Um, I prefer soy. It's healthier for us, but honestly, I rarely ever burn them. I just like the look of them. And so that is how that came out um, in my display. So that was just kind of one of the things I was doing this week. And then I had ordered this Birds and Bees IOD stamp and have yet to use it. So I took out my uh, little finger sander and prepared the backside of these stamps first. And then I just cut out a couple because I just wanted to, you know, give them a try today. And um, just a little tip here, if you are going to use a stamp for the first time, you probably don't want to stamp right on your project. So one thing I like to do is keep these little brown paper bags that you get at any little specialty shop or what have you. I had actually gotten a couple of them over the last few weeks as I had been doing a little bit of thrift shopping, which is pretty unusual for me. Make sure you stay tuned. I have quite a few thrift uh, flips coming up for some beautiful items that I did pick up and then just wanted to test that on this brown paper bag and see how that came out and that came out lovely and then these come with a mask so you can cover over what you've done if you don't you know want to stamp over that but you do want to stamp beside it um, and then once I got the mask on there I just added a little bit more vines and leaves here and there and then I did add one more bird to this and then I like to distress these brown paper bags with a little bit of the um, antiquing ink um, I just like the look of that but certainly that's not something that's necessary and you know now I have a little gift bag that I can give away to somebody um, if I want to um, use that in the future. If you are able over the course of the year to collect either these brown paper bags in different sizes or even white ones or go on to Amazon and purchase a multi-sized pack, this would be a wonderful way to make your own Christmas gift bags. They're much less expensive than a dollar a piece, generally speaking. And that way, I don't know about you, but I kind of like all of my gift bags to have a theme or my wrapping paper. Paper. So this would be a lot of fun to either stamp on bags or wrapping paper for Christmas. Just pick a, a stamp that, you know, speaks to you for that.
Then if you had seen my recent birds video um, for spring, I had taken this candle um, holder that I found on the good table at my dump a couple of years ago, which I love. Um, but I had painted this in, I cleaned it up, painted it in this pretty um, sagey green co color and covered it with antiquing uh, ink to go with my craft room decor and then I had thrifted this little black spool of string which was kind of my inspiration to get me started on this but I had mentioned in that video that I was hoping that I could come across some cream colored string and sure enough I did at an antique store this week so I just traded that out so you'll have to let me know whether you preferred it with the black or with the cream string but I absolutely love this little thing it's so sweet in my craft room. It is funny to me how such a simple little thing can make a difference depending on the area you put it in. In this area, I preferred it with the black, and then in my craft room, I preferred it with the cream. <laughs> but anyway, it is so, so sweet. That was a salt and pepper shaker, that little bird. I filled the holes on the top with clay, painted it, and then distressed that with ink. And then I did end up, once I had the cream and I was happy with that, I did end up gluing that down. I might add a little bit of moss later. And the next item that I am doing, again, I found on the good table at the dump. And it's such a cute little planter. Um, it has a sweet little Christmas uh, decor on, on the front of it. But actually, it's almost a waxy paper or sticker. Um, and so I thought this would be very nice to flip for spring. Um, and I usually don't de decorate much with Santa Claus for Christmas anyway. I just took um, this ice coffee colored, or, or actually I think it's a vintage drop cloth colored um, paint, and I gave that uh, just one good coat of that to cover. And then once that was covered, I took this Prima Redesign Blossom Flight Transfer. My son, I believe, got me this, uh, I think for my birthday. And so I've been using this up this spring because just a little piece goes a long way. And unfortunately, it was starting to stick to itself in places. So I wanted to make sure that I used it up before it got destroyed. Even though I keep rolling it up and putting it back in its little canister, uh, they just have a tendency to stick to themselves. So it's a good idea to use it when you can. Now I am just going to cut some pieces here and there on this and I'm going to do two different things on one on each side. I have used transfers from IOD, from Prima Redesign, and from many other places that I've gotten on Amazon and on Etsy. And I have to say, this was one of the most difficult to release. And I don't know if it's because I'm on a curved surface, which I have done before, or if it's because I am on a metal surface, or if it was simply this particular transfer but it was definitely giving me a run for my money to make it stick I do love the way that it came out I love the fact that the handles and the top of this rim were already the perfect brown to go with the branches and the bird on this um, so once I got that down and burnished um, on the other side I kept it a little bit more simple that way I can flip it from one side to the other depending on what I'm doing or if you like you can use a transfer for a whole nother season here um, if you especially if you have limited space if you live in a small apartment uh, or something or a small bedroom area then you may want to do one one side spring and one side fall and that way in the fall you can just turn that same thing around and fill it with another you know bunch of things and so I am just extending this a little bit adding it a little bit here and there another thing I love about transfers cut a piece here cut a piece there make it look the way you want and then this would be lovely as a planter and so that's you know an option um, I of course want to take a little bit of this distressing ink and just distress mostly around the top and bottom edges of these pictures just because I love the contrast of that but you don't have to do that. I really love the way that this came out. It's very pretty. It really goes cute with the little bird that I happen to have in this little reddish tones uh, with some of the little burlap and twine and yarn and such that I have in this color tone, all of which I picked up as well as the large spindle underneath it at TJ Maxx or Marshalls over time. They do have a really great selection of this sort of thing, especially in the Christmas season. Uh, so I was very fortunate to get a number of those items and I love the way they look in this little bucket. Now that takes me on to my absolute favorite flip today and that is this cute 
almost primitive country birdhouse that I picked up at a an antique store um, when I went thrifting with my husband recently. And I knew the minute I saw it what I wanted to do with it. And I think I probably paid maybe in the eight to ten dollar range for it. Uh, normally, I don't find this nice of an item in, on the good table at my dump when it comes to birdhouses. Once in a blue moon, um, but generally speaking, they're press wood, press board. So I like the fact that this was solid wood and definitely had the bones and the shape and everything that I was going for. So it was worth the 10 bucks for me. I knew I was probably going to keep it. I will not make you watch me paint the whole thing. <laughs> so I painted that entire thing. And then once that was dry, I took parts of the same transfer that I had just been using by redesign that uh, blossoms in flight, I think it's called. And so once I uh, had this dry, I wanted to, to just cut off a couple of pieces and fit them. This is kind of a large transfer. It's meant maybe to cover the entire front of uh, of a of a dresser, you know, or something like that. That's a little too busy for me. So for me, I like to cut off a bird and a couple branches here, or you know, a little bit of greenery there. Um, that's just the way I like it. But it would be beautiful, I'm sure, on a large piece. But for me, I knew when I got it, I wanted to just keep cutting pieces of it off. And I love the fact that you can, on an item like this, just wrap it around off to the side. And then played around with another piece and just trying to decide whether I wanted to fill that blank space at the bottom uh, or whether I wanted to put that on the drawer and then uh, decided that I was going to put it on the drawer. And so once I got that one down, then again, I just kept clipping and moving bits and pieces of this transfer around till I got it the way that I wanted it. I added the knob I had taken off the drawer uh, back on the front of that. And then I just kind of looking around at the bits and pieces, I uh, felt like there was a couple missing where it had been cut. Uh, it wasn't quite as clean as I would like it with the florals and the greens. So I just added a little bit more here and there uh, to finish that look. Then once I had all this down and burnished and all of the pieces where I wanted them to be, then I was able to move on to the next step. Now, this little birdhouse came just as you see it here uh, with that opening um, in the, in the middle of it. I'm not sure if that was supposed to also have a drawer and it was missing or if this is just the way that it came. I'm not certain. Um, it only had the one drawer. And so what I decided that I wanted to do was I wanted to fill that little empty space. So I started with a piece of foam and some green and white um, I'm not sure where I got this greenery, to be honest. I've had it in my stash for quite some time. Um, but any boxwood or anything would be pretty here. Um, I did decide I wanted to cut that down and push that back just a little bit so that I had more space um, in the front. And all I did was just go ahead and fill this entire area with some of this pretty greenery. And then I took and uh, just filled the empty spaces with some moss that I had on hand so you can't see the foam. And I just love the look of moss. Used the same moss to form a little bird's nest in the drawer. Added some feathers. I'm sorry, I'm out of screen here. With my... Um, little wooden bird that came in a thrift flip recently and then I wanted to take my finger sander and just kind of go around the edges this is optional uh, but I wanted to distress back uh, to some of that wood and then go ahead and add a little bit of distressing uh, ink or um, wax antique wax on this just to match my decor because I knew I was going to be keeping this piece and before I show you everything all together I had one more thing that I wanted to make to go with this little vignette um, I picked up this little uh, wooden sign at the good table at the dump that says best friends and I painted over that with the same coloring and then I took the little finger sander again distressed the edges and then took just one little snippet of that same transfer and put that on the front. I'm always tempted to add words but I, there are a lot of words on things in my home so I wanted to make sure that I didn't and I wanted this to be more than one season. So I just took a little bit of that um, bird in flight, put that on there and then um, I had in my stash 
this little ornament. I think it's a Christmas ornament. It hang, it hung by a little string. Of course, I added a little bit of distressing around the edges on this one as well. And then this little ornament, you've probably seen them. I've seen them everywhere over the course of my life. Um, it's not something I would normally thrift, but it was in a bag full of little birdhouses and such. And so I was trying to figure out which thing I wanted on top, but I did settle for the little bird. Um, I just cut the little string off the top of that and painted this again in the same um, linen color. And then once that was dry, went over that with the uh, antique wax so that the wax could settle down in and around the bird, highlighting the areas that I wanted highlighted and simply glued that to the top of the sign with a little bit of greenery to finish this little sign off. And so easy, so sweet. So if you would please make sure that you have hit like and subscribe and leave me a comment and let me know what you think about today's video. I would love to know if you are preparing for spring. I did do a clip of my home decorated for spring uh, recently and so if you haven't seen that you want to check out my little clip video that's like less than three minutes. And I absolutely love, love, love the way today's projects came out. These are definitely my kind of vintage feeling spring home decor pieces. And so hopefully you like them as well. I would love to know if there is anything that you have in your stash that is going to be used based on inspiration from today. So thank you so much for stopping by. I will see you soon. Take care.